This video was supported by an educational grant from Healthmark. Hello, I'm Corey Osted, and I'm an epidemiologist with a team that designs and conducts real world studies. I'm here to talk to you today about common defects found on endoscope exteriors. New standards say that all flexible endoscopes should be inspected with good lighting and magnification every time they're used. And I think that's a great idea because we've found that 100% of patient ready endoscopes are damaged or dirty. And frontline workers have told us that they just don't know what to look for when they're inspecting scopes. So this video is gonna show you some examples of common defects we've seen on endoscopes in the field. And the photos I'll show you were all taken of scopes that were considered fully processed and ready for patient use by the facilities where we found them. Now in my experience, common defects fall into three buckets, damage, soil and debris, and fluid and residues. Since most components of reusable endoscopes are black or white or silver, we watch for stuff that's yellow or orange or brown or red or green because that typically means they're still dirty. Now let's take a look at some defects. This scope has buckling on the insertion tube right next to the boot junction where it connects to the control body. This defect is important because the scope can bend sharply and that could pinch fragile components that are inside there. Here's an EUS scope where the universal cord was dented. And when you take a closer look, you can see that the dents are on both sides, which we call crushing. That can happen when a cabinet or a cart door um, squashes it or when someone leans on it. Now the area around the biopsy port on this EUS scope has some pretty deep scratches and gouges that look like someone poked it with something sharp, like a needle. There's also a little gap around the grommet that could possibly allow fluid and patient secretions to get up inside the scope. This is the control body of an EBIS bronchoscope that's pretty scratched up, but it's difficult to see the scratches without magnification. So here you go. There are deep gouges and puncture wounds all over everywhere. Now here's a gastroscope that looked pretty good at first glance. But when we looked at the distal end with magnification, we could see that the light guide lenses have some strange white stuff around the edges. That might be adhesive that's flaking off. There's also dents or gouges here and around the edge of the instrument channel that could be from instruments used during procedures. And the edge by the auxiliary water channel outlet looks like the distal end cap might be cracked. Now my colleague John also thought that the objective lens might be cracked too. So we looked at it from various angles, and then we could see that the lens was indeed cracked, and it actually looked like a chunk was missing. Now this is a bad defect because fluid could get up under the lens, damaging the scope and harboring germs. Sometimes defects like this are noticed because the lens fogs up and the image gets kind of fuzzy during procedures. Now just as a touch point, the adhesive is still there around the edges of those light guides, but it's not as noticeable. Now, just for fun, take another look at the image on the left. Now that you know it's there, can you see the cracked lens? It's right here. Now we're gonna look at a colonoscope. The adhesive band near the distal end has disintegrated and it has pitting and jagged edges that make it impossible to clean and could injure the patient. Just as a touch point, here's the distal end of a brand new GI scope. And this is how the glue band should look. And this is the adhesive band on the other end of the bending section for this scope. Gray adhesive bands on Olympus scopes often are starting to disintegrate and may not be intact and smooth anymore. Now here's the distal end head on. The adhesive around the lens is gray and chunks of it appear to be missing. And the lens itself looks kind of foggy or dirty when I compare it to the appearance of a brand new distal end, like this. In addition, the end cap has impact damage, and there may be a crack between the auxiliary water channel outlet and the instrument channel outlets. See this right here? 
Okay, so the distal end of this bronchoscope looks really strange compared to the distal end of a brand new bronchoscope. And repair specialists said that the white distal end cap appeared to be damaged, and it's possible someone had done a poor job of adhesive application when they tried to fix it. So here's a pediatric colonoscope where the distal end looked okay from the side and the adhesive seemed like it was in good shape. But the distal tip had some sort of scale or film on the objective lens. And there was brown stuff around the air water nozzle housing and inside the outlet of the auxiliary water channel. The scope also had a dent by the outlet of the instrument channel and there's a little chip on one of the light sources. So this scope's a great candidate for recleaning and repair. Okay, here's a ureteroscope that's still in the tray that was used to sterilize it using hydrogen peroxide gas. There's a clump of white fibers sitting on the control handle here and white stuff along the groove on the right. There's also some rusty or brown colored residue in this crack. It still looks dirty to me and those fibers shouldn't be there. There are also blobs of white residue near the biopsy port and there is yellow residue on the biopsy port rim. When we tipped it slightly, we could see that the blobs of white residue had shadows around them. And it looked like they maybe been wet in a bigger circle that evaporated or something. We don't know what this is or how it got there, but other experts said that the white blobs could be reprocessing chemical residues or possibly adhesive that came out of the grommet area during the sterilization cycle. Now here's the distal end of an EBIS bronchoscope with an ultrasound component that should be pink, but seems to have some sort of brown or gray haze on it with a black or gray coating around the edges and a layer of black gunk under the groove that holds the balloon. This gunk came off when we rubbed it with a swab. So this scope has some sort of residue from inadequate cleaning and it might possibly also have discolored adhesive around the ultrasound component too. Now this is the distal end of an EUS scope that has a pink ultrasound component. And I noticed something yellow in the groove that holds the balloon in place during procedures right here. When we pulled out a photo we'd taken previously, the same scope, you can see it's clearly different. There's nothing yellow in that groove. I thought it might be a balloon fragment stuck in the groove and the techs used a little instrument to try to grab it. And sure enough, when you look closely, you can see that part of the balloon didn't get removed by staff in the procedure room and their processing techs didn't notice it either because they weren't using a magnification system to inspect scopes and they didn't know what to look for. Now this is the distal end of an ERCP scope and the white component looked kind of dirty to me with black stuff on it. But what really caught my eye was a glint of something yellow up under the elevator. Yellow, can you see it? It's right here. We couldn't get a really good photo with a smartphone, so we used a boroscope to get under the elevator. And what did we find? Some sort of mushy or fluffy yellow stuff. We don't know what it is or how it got there, but the techs couldn't get it out, so they sent the scope out for repair. Now for a change of pace. When we looked in this storage cabinet for GI scopes, we noticed that some of the white centimeter markings look kind of yellow or orange, like this 40 centimeter marking. So we pulled the scope out of the cabinet and then we noticed that the numbers close to the distal end were dark orange or brown, while they were mostly yellow and white up by the control handle. So we compared it to the insertion tube of a colonoscope that was in the same cabinet and it had bright white numbers and the surface seemed shiny rather than dull like this gastroscope. We wondered if the discoloration was from gastric acid or bile exposure in the stomach and sent it out for repair. Now the manufacturer said that this was a critical defect that they thought was caused by chemical exposure. So what kind of chemicals do this? Well, European GI societies say that glutaraldehyde can stick to the surface and react with protein 
causing it to affix to the surface of the scope. And you can detect this by looking visually for yellow or brown discoloration on the marking rings up to the point where the endoscope has been inserted into the patient. So that sounds like it could be a fit for this situation because the facility was using glutaraldehyde to reprocess their scopes. But it still doesn't answer the question, why did it happen to gastroscopes and not colonoscopes in the same facility? So here's another colonoscope, which had a puddle of oily, sticky stuff near the biopsy port. So we took a swab to see if we could remove it, and it went away. That let us get a clearer look at the grommet, and it looked really strange. Repair experts said that there may be chemical damage to the grommet here. Now, when we looked at the insertion tube and universal cord of this scope, we could see thick white residue all along it, probably from insufficient rinsing or off-label use of insoluble materials. Like products that we've seen in the field, there's cymethicone from infant gas relief drops, which reduces bubble and foaming in GI procedures, and cooking sprays like PAM or hy V, which are used for lubrication during GI procedures. And I'm completely serious here. I'm not kidding. A lot of hospitals use PAM for this. And then there's silco spray that's used for lubrication during bronchoscopy. None of these products are water soluble, which means they may not be removed from scopes during manual cleaning, and they could interfere with reprocessing effectiveness. Now our findings were published in APIX journal, and we recommend that you go visiting and see what off-label products are being used during procedures if you find residues like this, because they may impact reprocessing effectiveness. So let's wrap up with some key points. When you first begin inspecting your endoscopes, you're probably gonna find some that are damaged, dirty, or wet. And the defects are gonna be easier to spot if you look for them with good lighting, magnification, and different angles. It's a good idea to have a plan in place to deal with whatever it is that you're gonna find. And when you do find something odd, ask questions. Obviously, re-reprocess scopes that have visible soil or residues on them and send damaged scopes out for repair. This video is an excerpt from a free one hour CE webinar on visual inspection using lighted magnification, which is available on our educational portal, along with CE webinars on several related topics. We also have YouTube videos on endoscope anatomy, tools used for visual inspection, and common defects found inside endoscopes. These videos and citations for our published papers are linked in the video description underneath the video. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, please visit our website or contact us by email at education at austininsights.com. This YouTube video was made possible by an educational grant from Healthmark, which provided the magnification systems and boroscopes we use to conduct visual inspections. Please contact Healthmark directly for further information about their systems for visual inspection at www.hmark.com. We would also like to thank Endoscopy Repair Specialist, Inc., which provided technical advice related to visual inspection and our interpretation of findings. Here's a list of disclaimers that you should review and consider prior to making any changes to device processing practices at your facilities.